What was your thoughts, feelings when you first saw the Kaaba? When you meet the blessed Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Jannah, inshallah, what would you say to him? Wow, what a question. Look, Dave is probably my alter ego. He's probably that geezer that I wanted to be. But, um, I certainly had an experience in Umrah. When my forehead hit the hit the green carpet, tears, and, and, and I just remember this real feeling of, no matter what happens in my life, I have Islam and I have Allah. Assalamu alaikum. So as promised, uh, probably a bit later than maybe people anticipated, but I'm back at work, so I haven't had a lot of time. Uh, but I put a um, an opportunity for people to ask questions. People went to my Twitter page uh, and posted some questions. So I'm going to go through some. I've got them on my phone here. I'm going to try and answer as many as I can. Probably the shorter ones and maybe the ones that are more simple to understand. So the first question is from Nazmi Adam. Um, how, how do you feel the first time wearing the ihram? the two white cloths for Umrah. So yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, when you perform Umrah, so when you actually do the tawaf around the Kaaba, well, in pre preparation even on your journey to the Kaaba, you get changed into nothing but two towels. So one for your top half, one for your bottom half. And to be honest, I think the first feeling that you get is almost a vulnerability. I think that's quite strange. Obviously, you're used to being fully clothed. And so just walking around in two towels, is at first, it seems a bit vulnerable, I would say. When you actually get to the Kaaba, and everybody is walking around, there is a real sense that everyone is equal. Um, and you know, you're well aware that some people there probably have zero money. Some people are billionaires. Some people come from this class, some people come from here. They're different nationalities, everyone. The, the Ikram is a real kind of, it strips you down of everything. It's just literally you and Allah. That's what it feels like. So not only is it kind of a, creates a unity amongst the people there, that personal experience of just stripping everything down and being just you in front of Allah. It's something that I, I guess no one would ever experience unless you did it. You can only do it if you're Muslim. So yeah, but ma mashallah, good question. Okay, next one is from Google. Bite. I see you on the videos talking with people without headphones. How do you prevent the mic from picking up the sounds from the speakers? I ain't got a clue, <laughs> to be honest. All this equipment I have, someone else set it up for me. I am the worst person with equipment and I can't stand equipment. Computers for me do not work on logic. Things go wrong unnecessarily. So at the moment, I've got everything set up perfectly to do whatever it needs to do. And my mic is hanging from the from here, so I guess it doesn't pick up any sort of flashes from the table, or I've got a very good setup. I've got a real phobia for techie stuff. I can't stand it. So let's not get started on that. But yeah, sorry, I know that's not very helpful, but that's um, my answer to that one. No filter, but what's your manhaj? So I currently don't follow one of the schools of thoughts. I have my reasons for it. I think, to be honest, when I first came into Islam, I wanted to, and I looked into them, but yeah, I, 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 I don't follow one particular school of thought. What is your favorite surah and why? Also, don't forget to feed some squirrels with peanuts. They're cheap and those homies love them. <laughs> okay, and this is from Anon um, Waimus. Okay, so my favorite surah is Al-Kaf and it's because of the story with Kidr and Musa. You know, and everyone knows the story. I mean, there are three things that happen, but the most notable one that probably hits you is when Kidr actually kills a child and Musa is completely baffled by this and questions it. At the end of the day, Musa was unable to see the bigger wisdom of why this happened and this is a real thing you know when people say why is the suffering why is this why is that we only have the pixel Allah has the has the whole picture and so we don't often know the wisdom behind things that happen and so I think this is a really powerful surah for, for many reasons <clears throat> it changes all the time though next month it could be something else and over Ramadan I'll probably change it up as I read uh, so Halal Newton asks what's your favorite food I'm gonna say steak I'm pretty bland with my food I don't season very boring with my food intentionally because don't want to get fat. <laughs> That's it. Um, a says, can you spot me in the gym? Sure. You must be lifting some heavy weight then. How is your connection with Allah now? Do you feel close? So I would say um, when I converted to Islam, the first year, it was kind of developing, learning more about the attributes of Allah, who is Allah. Obviously, you believe Allah exists, uh, you submit to Allah, but the connection does grow over time. Uh, and for me, Umrah was really, uh, I don't know, something happened. I, I'm, not, I'm not a person for really kind of these kind of, uh, you know, sometimes when you hear Christians talk about the experiences they have with Jesus, that's not, you know, I'm not that sort of person, but um, I certainly had an experience in Umrah where um, it was in Rauda. Um, so there's a part in the Prophet's Masjid in Medina where you queue up, you do two rakas in, uh, there's a green carpeted area as opposed to red like everything else. And they say it's like praying in Jannah. Uh, and I remember being really flustered because, you know, you're getting pushed on the on the way that it's packed. When my forehead hit the, hit the green carpet, tears and, and, and I just remember, remember this real feeling of no matter what happens in my life, I have Islam and I have Allah. And, and that is 
you know, the most powerful feeling that you can ever have. Uh, and, I, and I've kept it since. So have you found another platform yet you're comfortable in giving dower? So this is a tough one, you know, I, I started on YouTube, kind of a small channel, still a small channel, but it's grown, it's grown a fair amount in the last like, couple of months. I joined TikTok. I didn't really want to. A few of the guys at EF Dawa were on it, but there were many young Muslims that were taking Shahada and coming back into the EF Dawa revert groups, many young people. So I started to think, hang on a minute, maybe for my feelings of TikTok, we know there's a lot of, you know, whatever go nonsense twerking, da -da -da. and to be honest, the Muslims are doing it on there as well. And it's quite a bizarre platform when you first go there. And there are some good, there are some good things on there as well, but it, it's the good things are swamped with bad you know they're kind of overshadowed by, by a lot of it but i kind of thought you know what maybe there are born muslims or muslims that are not strong on their iman maybe they're born muslim but they haven't yet you know so i thought could can i produce content that maybe inspires the youth or i can do content that doesn't have music that gives reminders i, I could try and make it funny as well and that's where the dave and jeff stuff came from um but you know um i got video after video banned until i got permanently banned from tiktok then i went to instagram i had two videos banned so i just deleted that uh, now i'm on twitter and i haven't got a clue how to navigate myself around i've got a brother who helps me i think i guess for me it's youtube now and um i'll just focus on that i don't i don't think i'll go back to tiktok or or any anything like these things to be honest i want to continue talking about the uyghurs i'm not going to be not speaking about these things so yeah i guess for me it's youtube you know unless anyone has any suggestions i tried one called clapper but you know barely anyone on there to be honest when you meet the blessed prophet muhammad peace be upon him in jannah inshallah what would you say to him this is from smiley b wow what a question what would you say i can imagine just being jaw dropped and I'll ask how I did, you know, um, that's a really good question. And, and I don't know if I can really answer. I've heard these sorts of questions before, you know, if you had the dinner, if you had a dinner, what would you talk about? I mean, we, we have all the information we need about his life. And, and I guess, yeah, it would be, what would I ask him? Let me have a think. Maybe the time, I, I probably want to know about the times um, that, that he found really tough. You know, the times when he was really, you know, beaten, tortured and, and how he kept going. I mean, look, we, we know why, but um, I think these are the things that I probably, probably ask um are you bayem sorry if i'm butchering some of your names on here um, I have some questions for you. What are you most grateful for in your life? I guess at the moment, Islam, but um, I'm very grateful for my mum. You know, my mum is the best mum uh, anyone could ever wish for. Um, I'm grateful for my niece. I'm grateful for my sister and brother. Yeah, I think that's probably the first thing that comes to my mind. When do you think the perfect day is? I guess that would be in, in Jana. Of everyone in your family, whose death would you think disturbs your life the most? Rather not answer that one. Uh, success, according to Brother Jordan, is... So yeah, look, at the end of the day, when we all reach that time, success has to be to the standard of Allah, isn't it? That is the only success would be Dean, really. There are successes outside it, you know, how well you did with your career. But these are all Dean as well, you know. We're supposed to be hardworking. We're supposed to be good to our family. We're supposed to be kind to our neighbor. It's very easy to make success something material, and it can happen to all of us. Um, so I think it's trying to make sure that that success doesn't uh, overtake your life. Okay, I have another one. This is from HSE123. What was your thoughts, feelings when you first saw the Kaaba? Was it OMG or was it, um, I guess, what do I do now? Something in between. The Kaaba's magnificent, but it was nothing like my experience in Rauda. Um, and I think one thing you need to understand as, as, as a revert is I don't, you know, I haven't grown up with stories of the Kaaba. It's not something for me, you know, I probably reckon, I spoke to John Fontaine and he said that um, trip to Jerusalem had a lot more effect on him because these are the things that he heard about. Now, don't get me wrong, the, the Kaaba is magnificent. And, and when, it, when you get there, it is jaw dropping. It is amazing. But when I was looking around, there were many people kind of in tears, ecstatic. And that wasn't the effect it had on me. Uh, but you know what? Who knows when I go back for Hajj? Uh, who knows? So Imbasat says, my question, can you please ask Smile to Jana to raise voice for the Uyghurs? He has a big following and surely could ask Muslims to raise voice. Yeah, I, I think, look, S Sabor um, is doing a fantastic job. Mallory reward him. I've seen Hamza Sources, Mohammed Hijab, Ali Dawa. No doubt Zishan will jump on board as well. And, um, and you know, the idea is that we all come together. Um, there, there are things in the pipeline. But, you know, these are very difficult because, you know, it's quite hard sometimes because I'll talk about the Uyghurs and then in the comment section you get, well, what about Syria? What about Yemen? And, you know, I do a lot of, all of my fundraising for my channel goes to Yemen. You know, maybe maybe Zishan will decide to to attack a certain other area where he's more effective. We, we need to put pressure on people to do things, but we can't all take everything on, you know? Um, and I, I, that's why I said, I don't think it's particularly helpful when, you know, if I see him Sabors, you know, he's doing all that work for the Uyghurs and people in his comments are like, well, what about Kashmir? Because it's not like, you know, it's less important. We need we need to cover all bases, that's for sure. Sajada says, do you miss Jeff? So <laughs> I think um, 
look, Dave is probably my alter ego. He's probably that geezer that I wanted to be. Uh, hopefully, I was never as ignorant as him, but probably some of some I probably was to an extent. Jeff is just kind of chilled. Uh, Jeff is uh, doesn't get flustered. He's very reasoned. I guess Jeff is a sort of character I aspire to be. And I think, you know, me me creating these characters, I'm sure there is something within me within those characters.